Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So this week I've got kind of a toy on the bench here. Um, so it's not really a toy for kids. This is, uh, this is an RC truck. It's a hobby level RC truck. This is the Traxxas TRX-4. Um, it is, it's got four wheel drive, um, locking front and rear differential selectable on the remote, um, oil filled shocks, uh, it's a it's a pretty cool truck, and I've had this for a while, and I do enjoy going out um, using it in the snow or like out on a trail doing some rock crawling that kind of stuff. But for Christmas, my wife got me this here. This is a DJI drone, and what's cool about it is you actually fly it uh, not by just looking at the drone, but by putting these goggles on, and you see the image from the camera on the drone through the, the goggles, which is super cool. It's a, it's a blast to fly the thing. But ever since I got it, I've been thinking it would be really cool to be able to drive the RC truck the same way. And I did a little bit of digging around and uh, DJI, the company that manufactures the drone, no longer sells the camera and transmitter part, but um, they're working uh, alongside this company, CADEX uh, FPV, um, and I think there's another one, Run Leader 2, and they're selling, um, you can buy just the camera and the video transmitter um, component. Um, in fact, they call this the, the Vista kit. And I'll, I'll link this guy uh, down in the, in the video description if you want to check it out. In fact, I'll put links to everything you're seeing in the video um, down there if you want to check it out. As always, there are going to be affiliate links. So if you click it, uh, I make a couple bucks depending on what you buy. It doesn't cost you anything different whether you click the link or you search for it on Amazon. It's gonna it's gonna cost you the same amount of money. So it's a, it's an easy way for you to help out if you're genuinely interested in something I'm talking about here today. Check out those links in the description. But back to what we're talking about here. So I thought it'd be cool to mount this guy on the Traxxas TRX4 and drive it around, you know, from say my recliner in the living room, um, using the the goggles. So let this let's get this guy open and. Uh, see what we get in here. This is the antenna. Oh, we'll try to get out of there. Got the antenna. And then this is the video transmitter and camera. So this part here is what takes the video feed from the camera and then transmits it wirelessly to those goggles. And I've done a little bit of research already uh, on this, and I know that the, the challenge with trying to use uh, this device uh, on a land vehicle or something other than a drone, which is what it's intended for, is uh, this guy throws off a ton of heat, apparently. Um, there's very little, these, these panels on here are designed to sink heat away from the chips, but uh, just having it um, just sitting on the bench or having it even, you know, on a moving vehicle uh, that's not generating anywhere near as much air as a drone would. Because with the drone, you have all those kind of rotating props just constantly throwing air at this. Um, it overheats. So let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so here's what I came up with. Um, this is uh, just a standard 40 millimeter fan. This is meant for use inside a computer. Um, and this is a housing that I designed that is going to sit on top of the Traxxas uh, TRX-4. And the idea is to allow air to come in the bottom of this housing, um, forced up by the fan across the video transmitter module, um, which sits on here, and then this plate sits on top. So before we get this together, um, what we need to do is actually solder the power wires onto this guy. Everything, they've tried to make everything as miniature as possible uh, on these, which is really cool, um, but you've actually got to solder the uh, the positive and negative power leads onto this. So let's go down to my uh, soldering workbench. All right, that part is done. So we've got the video transmitter, two leads soldered onto that. 
um, then the leads from the fan coming up and then they all solder together right here to this two pin connector. So let's take this back out and finish building it in housing. All right, so here we are back out in my regular shop and uh, I realize we've got to do one more thing. The antenna does not come attached either. This has just uh, like a tiny little um, connector like a Wi-Fi card on a laptop. Okay, so now we should be ready to actually assemble this into, into here. So uh, we'll go ahead and the fan goes in first. And if we look inside the housing I designed here, it's a little hard to see, but there is like a recess in here. That is for the wires that come out of the side of the fan. So we're gonna put that side in first. And then make sure the fan goes all the way into the bottom of the housing. Everything in here is a friction fit. It's nice and tight. So you got to make sure it seats all the way. And that sits up. It's raised. It's not actually on the bottom of that. It's on uh, four little feet that hold it up so that it's able to draw air in from a vent at the bottom and the sides and the back. Next goes this piece, which has uh, four... Um, screw holes on it for very small, these are M2 uh, machine screws, 16 millimeter. Uh, they're going to hold our transmitter onto the next part of the platter here. Okay, now you can see we still have some room on the top here for air to circulate around that. We've got our antenna and power coming out of the back and our antenna actually just slips into this holder here in the back. Holds that. And our top has a cutout here on the side to make room for the power lead from the fan coming up and, and also accommodate room for these wires coming out and accommodate room for the wire for the camera in the front. So again, friction fit, nice and tight. That goes all the way down and smooth across the top. Now, pull the protective cover off the camera here. Uh, I don't believe the camera's marked top and bottom, so what, what, uh, what we're going to have to do is actually just power this thing up uh, to see which way is right side up for the camera through the goggles. All right, I didn't get it on camera because there was just really no good way to record it, but um, I went ahead and uh, figured out which way was the right side up on the camera, got it paired with my goggles, and this is ready to go on the TRX-4. So let me show you how this guy mounts up. And just as easy as that, we are mounted ready to go just two screws to take this on and off uh, in the factory hole locations and it ends up kind of almost looking like maybe uh, I don't know like sort of a military radar or something on the on the roof there with the the camera and the antenna and you could run this off of just a battery attached right up here uh, on the roof but I wanted a step further and added a lead on my TRX4 that goes down uh, it routes around here and then goes underneath uh, here, I drilled a hole through the, the body where you can't see it, uh, so we don't, you know, have that hole. Um, and it runs down and just piggybacks off the same battery uh, that the, the TRX-4 runs off of. Uh, the input voltage range on this, I think, is like 2S to, uh, I don't know, I think at least 4S. So it's pretty wide voltage uh, range for the, the input. So let's get this plugged in and let's take it out for a drive. All right, so here we are outside, and I know you can't see me, but I'm just sitting in my recliner in my nice warm house with the goggles on and the remote for uh, for this truck, and it is so cool driving this thing around the yard. Uh, I mean, I'm a grown man, and I feel like a kid 
uh, just driving around my yard with this uh, with this thing. And this is this is the quality of the video that you're actually getting right through the uh, the goggles. Uh, there's no recorder on the I'm speeding up sections here, but there's no recorder on the, that video transmitter part. The video is actually recorded on an SD card uh, in the goggles. So the video, the quality of the video that you're seeing here is what I'm actually seeing live um, in the goggles. Uh, there's, it's got, I think, a four kilometer range, which is probably about twice the range of the actual transmitter for the, the control of this truck. So I can't drive it that far anyway. Um, and if you see me kind of, there's sections here where it looks like the truck stops a second. If I get stuck, I'm actually switching uh, the front and rear differential locks on so that I have more traction uh, to get out of these spots. Just climbing over some rocks uh, here. I think I must have had the front passenger wheel up in the air till I locked the diff and came down off of that. Um, but it is, uh, I can't express how amusing it is to just drive around your, your yard from the, the comfort of your, your chair in the, uh, in the house. A lot of adventure out here. A little bit closer to the uh, the road. Um, one thing I was thinking of doing this, uh, you know, it's you have a great view on the camera, but I can only see in the front. So anytime I was crossing, that's just crossing my driveway there. But any place where I was near the road, um, I just tried to make sure that it was definitely clear, and then just you know shot across as quickly as possible. It would certainly suck to have somebody run this thing over. But uh, here I am coming down. Uh, this is sort of an area in my yard where uh, a lot of water will drain down um, in the rain and there's a, a drainage pipe, a culvert, uh, down here and I, again, I'm sitting up in my house uh, so I didn't want to lose signal but I think I'm going to come back down here on a different day and actually drive this truck through that, uh, this, this culvert here. I thought that'd be pretty cool uh, to drive through there. You can see the light on the other side of that guy but another day. Not today. It's too cold. I think it was uh, 18 degrees out when I recorded this, so not a great day to be going out and trying to fish that thing out of that culvert if I get stuck on a rock or, or something like that. So, let's see if we can climb over this pile of snow here and get a, a little run up the road. This, this the, the, uh, the Traxxas TRX4 actually has a two-speed transmission as well. I'm driving around on low and I'm getting stuck here. I think I'm high centered on the snow and ice. Um, I locked the differentials. And I think I come back and just try a slightly different line, but uh, we're going to get over this thing. There we go. So let's shift this. Oh, hello there, Mr. Carr. Let's shift this into high gear and uh, get up the street. All right, that's really high gear. Sped up 5x there. And then we'll finish off by climbing up. Uh, my front yard here and the the view doesn't really do it justice here. This is really really steep um, Climbing up here um, even a four-wheel drive I was struggling just uh, a little bit in some of these spots here where there's loose rock and uh, loose leaves So I actually built two of these modules I built one in the process of designing and testing this and then I built a second one um, for for this video, so I've got two complete units that mount on the top of one of these uh, tracks, this TRX-4s with the Land Rover Defender body. So I'm going to list this spare one, the second one I built up on eBay if anyone is interested. It is complete. It is ready to go. Just two screws in the factory hole locations um, on the truck uh, to get this guy um, added up onto the top of your truck. The CADX Vista FTP, F, eh, FPV unit is already included on there, all ready to go. Um, and it will include the, the wire uh, to, to run down into the truck uh, should you want to run the wire in, or you can power it just from a battery up on top. But let's take a quick look at the design files uh, for this guy and see if there's anything I missed pointing out when we put it together. Okay, so here's the design for this, and let's just talk really quick about the major design considerations that I had when I put this together. Uh, so probably the biggest two were that it was going to mount onto the TRX-4 Land Rover Defender body with no modifications. These two holes line up with uh, two of the factory screw holes um, on the, the roll cage for the, for the body. And this wedge in the back slips in between the factory roll cage and the factory uh, luggage rack on the roof of the Defender. The other big consideration was active cooling. I knew very quickly that I was not going to get away with just coming up with a fancy little mount that encouraged some airflow 
um, around that video transmitter. I, I turned it on on my bench and within two minutes it was overheating. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it does have protection. It, if you're paired with the goggles, it does tell you an on-screen display comes up and tells you right in the goggles that the, the transmitter is too hot and it's going to shut itself down. Um, so it's nice that it's actually, uh, you know, it does have protection built in, but it's not going to work for you for, for feeding video back. Um, so I knew I was going to need a robust active cooling solution. So let's take a look at how this works. Uh, we'll, get the, we'll get the individual pieces out of the way here so we can look at them one by one. So the main housing um, has vents on the bottom, vents on the side, and on the back for air to come in. Um, and has a curve here uh, so that you don't have sort of that hard corner in there for turbulence. And the fan sits down on each of these four corners. There's the relief on the side to allow for the wiring for the fan uh, to come up and not be pinched. And the next piece here is the, the tray that the video transmitter sits on. And these holes line up with the, the mounting holes uh, on that uh, on that Cadex Vista unit um, with two millimeters 16 uh, M2 16 millimeter long uh, machine screws uh, that holds it up off the fan allows the air to come up through here here and here uh, expand around the sides of the video transmitter and then around the top of it and come through the vents on the lid and the lid is also curved on the inside again to cut down on air turbulence and just encourage that air to come up around um, cool the top of the video transmitter and then exit out through those uh, through those vents uh, The antenna just slides right into this part here um, And it sits down low enough that there is enough room here that uh, it's it's sort of like a rubberized tube So it can bend over left or, or to the right um, without getting pinched anywhere all these corners are relieved um, including any of the corners for the parts that fit inside it's a tight friction fit, so uh, it's nice to have a little bit of relief just to get the parts started as you are sliding them in. And that is it, guys. Just as a reminder, um, I did make a second one of these. Um, I'm going to pop that up on eBay. Um, by the time this video goes live, I should have that listing up as well. So if you saw this and you happen to have one of the DJI goggles already um, and you want to pick this up, uh, it is a, it's a blast. Um, uh, it's it's hard to describe the the experience without just giving the goggles to someone and and uh, and letting them letting them try it. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Um, really appreciate your your likes and and, and subscribes if you enjoyed the video. Um, tell me what you think down below. Um, was this project worth it? Is this something you're interested in? What other things might be interested to control um, with with FPV? Um, take care, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.